We've all heard that social media isn't real life, and everyone knows that van life isn't as glamorous as what it's made to look like on Instagram. This video isn't going to be me stating that as if it's new information, but as someone who has been a van life YouTuber, I know based on all I've seen and read that people really don't understand the full extent of how different van life is and in which ways it's different than how it's portrayed on social media. So with my insider knowledge as an ex-van life YouTuber, hopefully I can point out some things that most social media van lifers aren't going to talk about so those of you interested in van life really know what you're getting yourselves into. In order to know if van life is for you, you have to be informed about all sides of the lifestyle. Not just the beautiful views overlooking the ocean, and not just the difficult border crossings and flat tires. You have to know about the smaller difficulties that don't make the final cuts of anyone's videos, and the things that don't even get filmed in the first place. The problem with van life content being different from how it's shown online is not due to every van life YouTuber being dishonest and just trying to cash in on a trend. The problem is that even the most authentic, genuine people, those who show the good and the bad side of van life, cannot possibly portray what it's like to live in a van accurately. No matter how hard one tries to show all aspects of their life, it's obviously impossible for viewers to really know what their lives are like because when someone's 24-hour day is put into a 15-minute video, a lot is left out. And what's left out is whatever is not very entertaining. The more interesting a video is, the more of it people will want to watch. So creators show what's interesting. The good is interesting, the bad is interesting, but the boring, mundane parts of the day aren't shown. Channels who leave more of the boring stuff in usually don't end up with as many views or subscribers as the people with drones and TV show levels of production going to foreign places in their vans and color grading all their footage. So that's what most people do. They aim for creating interesting videos that people enjoy watching, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as long as they're being transparent about the goal of their video just being to entertain. With these creators, you don't see the days where they spend 8 hours editing a vlog. You see maybe 10 seconds of it, or they just don't vlog on those days. Why would they? That would be extremely boring to watch. In general, the more entertaining and engaging a vlog is, the less realistic it is. The more entertaining people's vlogs are continuously, the more subscribers they will get. So in my opinion, it's often the less edited and I could even say more poorly edited videos from smaller channels that more accurately portray what van life is really like. Many people do van life to save money and when that's the case, you're probably not going to be able to afford to have someone professionally convert a Sprinter van for you for $60,000. If you can't afford a $60,000 Sprinter, this probably isn't the video for you because almost none of the problems I'm about to talk about will apply to you. The cheaper your van and build are, the less luxuries you will have, like running water, a toilet, electricity, or being able to stand up, which are likely not things you've ever considered luxurious in your life before. If you only have 10k to buy and convert a van, it's not going to turn out looking like this. Maybe closer to this, which was my van that cost just under $10,000. No toilet, no shower, no running water, just a leaky pump faucet, not enough solar or battery power to allow for me to have a heater and AC system, and definitely not enough room to stand up. Before I began van life, I really had no expectations for how it was going to go. I wanted whatever came my way, good or bad, as long as I wasn't, you know, being kidnapped, but really I was excited for the challenges and subsequently the personal growth that I knew van life would bring. But I found that there were many things that happened that I'd never heard anyone talk about, and trust me, I had watched a lot of videos about the cons of van life. One thing was how much the weather influences your quality of life. Yes, most people with more expensive builds have AC systems and enough energy to power a heater, but anyone who doesn't better be prepared to suffer when the weather is above 80 or below 60. I planned my entire trip around the average temperatures during the time of the year I'd be going to each place, and I still slept with a hat, mittens, thermal socks, two pairs of pants, long sleeve shirt, sweater, sweatshirt, a comforter, and a blanket at least a fourth to a half of the nights I was in the van. I've always been an early riser, but man did that change when it was 42 degrees in the morning and getting out of bed meant feeling like I just stepped out into a polar vortex. Making breakfast meant having to take your mittens off and watch your hands turn red as you shiver while making your non-toasted bagel for the 17th day in a row because that's the quickest thing to make and you gave up trying to make anything fun for breakfast weeks ago. And then doing the dishes means putting your poor little hands in ice cold water until they go numb. Sure, you can turn on your vehicle's heat, but you can't just leave your van running for hours every day. And then when it's hot out, those without solar can keep their van cool by parking in the shade. 
But if you have solar panels, you can't be hanging out under the trees all day long. You have to be aware of how much electricity you're using and how much you're getting. If it's been cloudy for a week straight and the skies aren't supposed to clear up anytime soon, your options are drive somewhere sunny or you won't have electricity in a couple days. The weather pretty much rules over your life when living in a van, especially if it's a simpler build. Being too cold or too hot can make it really hard to do what you need to do and really easy to lose motivation to do anything that would make you even more cold or more hot than you already are. A misconception many have before starting van life is that they won't mind the small living space of the van because they won't be in it that much. They'll be traveling and spending most of the days out hiking or sightseeing because that's what van lifers life seems to be like on YouTube. Or they'll be staying in one city but spending most of the days at work or college. We have ideas of what our lives will be like in the van, but they almost never end up being that similar to what we expected. If you spend most of your day in school and are basically only in your dorm to sleep, then that will likely stay the same when you start van life. You have to look at how much time you spend in your home currently and try to imagine spending that much time in a vehicle. If you work online, unless you want to go to Starbucks or a library five days a week, you're going to spend some days just sitting in your van working. Some people think they'll just sit outside and work every day, but it rains, sometimes it's too sunny to see a computer screen, and the temperature is often going to be too hot or too cold to make it enjoyable to sit outside all day trying to concentrate on your work. Also, think of the days you have where you just want to sit inside all day and rest or read a book or watch TV. You're still going to have those days when living in a van, maybe even more of them. If you currently spend every day outside hiking and biking, kayaking and exploring places, then it's a little more realistic to think you'll be doing that when in the van. But if you enjoy your lazy days in, then there will be days where you sit in your van for the whole day. Maybe you only get out to go to the bathroom, but otherwise spend the whole day crouching around your 15 square foot walking area, sitting on your bed or a seat doing work or watching Netflix. People don't show those days online, and I guarantee everyone has them because traveling full time is very tiring. It's not like going on vacation to a resort for a week and getting a break from life. Traveling for months or years really wears you down physically, mentally, and emotionally, and it can be easier to neglect one or more of those areas of your health in a van compared to a normal living situation. I think this is in part due to the constant change of location and lack of space that makes it a bit harder to have much stability or routine in your life. It might be hard for anyone who wants nothing more than to live in a van or travel full-time to imagine that people doing van life full-time will almost certainly at some point experience burnout and want nothing more than to be able to take a break from traveling for a while, but that's the reality for most. This is something that obviously feels a little goofy to talk about to anyone who's not traveling, but travel burnout is a thing, and it's something that we have to manage all the time. You're gonna burn out. If yeah. you keep doing, like, you're going to get to a point where you don't really want to travel anymore. And that means that you can't make, really feel like you're making videos anymore because people expect you to be traveling. We wish that a lot of the people who were bigger on social media at the time when we were coming into the lifestyle had been a bit more transparent about all of the aspects instead of just showing, like, those back window Instagram shots that are so beautiful and so enticing. Because when you actually get in it, you can start to feel like, oh, well, maybe this isn't for me because I'm struggling and I'm going through a lot of challenges and this is really hard and when you look around on social media and everyone seems to be thriving and loving life and just having the most grand time it can make you feel even more isolated towards the end of my travels i stayed in a hotel for two nights and just that short amount of time out of the van was really refreshing and that one full day in the hotel allowed me to finally feel grounded enough to be able to plan out what i was going to do from there Another reason people might not talk about this is because they don't want to sound ungrateful or seem like they're complaining when they're living other people's dreams. This makes sense, but it's important to know that even the most sought after lifestyles still have their difficulties. You can absolutely love what you're doing, but it doesn't mean it's not tiring. And a lot of overlanders we meet on the road, they'll travel for a few months and then they'll take a month in one spot and just really relax. and because they're, they're buggered, they're really tired. Something that not necessarily everyone will experience, but I would bet happens to at least some extent for most people, is that the physical atmosphere of living in such a small space makes it harder to motivate yourself to do things because they're often a little more burdensome. Take cooking, for example. You probably won't have an oven or microwave, probably just a propane or induction stove, so you have to take that out, set it up, maybe spend a minute hand pumping water into a pot, and then sit on the ground and cut up food 
on the ground. You'll probably never take the time to reheat leftovers on your stove if you even have room in your fridge for them in the first place because it's just way too much of a hassle. And it doesn't take 12 seconds from start to finish to make a meal. There's no jump cuts in real life or fun upbeat music playing in the background while you're doing your dishes. All you can hear is the noise of some lady yelling at her kids on their way into Walmart. And you're at Walmart because you're in a small town in Wyoming and that's the only place you could find that you know allows overnight parking or you just feel safer being in a place with cameras and lights. You thought before starting van life that you'd always be cooking outside, but then you realize that it just makes the process more complicated and time consuming. And it's definitely weird to do it at a Walmart. And all these things I know sound like first world problems. That's because they are. But nevertheless, when this is your reality day after day, the small inconveniences really add up and over time can begin to become a huge annoyance. You may see YouTubers cooking outside all the time, so you think you'll be doing the same. But what most people don't realize is that being a YouTuber and having to put out interesting content is sometimes the only reason people will do things. Some people who do 30 day challenges wouldn't do them if they couldn't make a video that they knew was going to get a lot of views recapping their experience. Sometimes a person may just want to sit in bed and eat fast food for dinner, but they're vlogging that day and you can't make a good slow motion montage of clips of you making an Instagram worthy meal if you get McDonald's. Or someone might plan their entire day around what's going to make the best content for a video. You never really know if a YouTuber actually likes what they're doing, or if they'd still be doing it if they weren't making bank from their channel. For those working from smaller vans, it might be hard to motivate yourself to work because maybe you made your bed an inch too high and you can't sit all the way up in it. Don't make that mistake like I did. But even if you measured right, sitting in your minivan's passenger seat or on your bed leaned up against the wall for hours on end is much different than sitting at a desk with a proper chair in an apartment where you can get up and walk to the kitchen to take a break, grab a snack, or you don't have to walk to a porta potty in the rain to pee every other hour. And those who do decide to have some form of toilet in their vans have to get used to not being able to just flush the toilet and never having to think about it again. Nope, you guys gotta take your waste and dump it somewhere every couple of days and it may or may not stink up the van depending on what kind of toilet you have. That's another thing no one talks about. Smells. When living in such a small area, a little bit of a bad smell goes a long way. When I would get a new rag out to do about 10 dishes with it, the whole van would smell bad within a couple minutes. I actually had to put my used rags in plastic Ziploc bags when not in use because they smelled that bad. Gray water tanks can get pretty smelly as well. I had a five gallon tank that would take about two weeks to fill up on average, and toward the end of that second week, I could definitely smell it. Also, not everywhere you stay overnight is going to be beautiful. Depending on what country you're in or what part of a country you're in, you might not have many amazing options. The less touristy, the less options you'll have. If you need a toilet, that'll limit your options because that means you can't just park in a random neighborhood. If you don't want to stay out in the middle of nowhere because you're a solo traveler or you want the safety and security of having phone service and other people around, that'll limit your options too. If you don't want to pay $20 to $40 a night to stay in a campground, you're down to Walmart, maybe the occasional Home Depot or Cracker Barrel, some quiet parks that you checked ahead of time online to make sure they allowed overnight parking, sketchy rest areas that you're technically not allowed to park overnight at, and maybe some cool trailhead parking lots. Having to plan out and worry about where you'll sleep every night is not something most people have ever done, and it can be kind of stressful when you're in areas that don't have many options. Take a look at the San Francisco area on the app iOverlander. It's not going to be difficult to find a nice place to park there, but now look at the same exact sized areas in Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Detroit, Columbus, and Atlanta. It's not going to be easy in those places. You also probably won't experience waking up to the sunrise streaming beautiful golden light into your windows while you're parked on the beach listening to the waves crash into the rocks. Unless you're not covering your windows while you sleep, which is weird and dangerous, unless you're on private property. And even if you are parked overnight on a beach, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be waking up to the sound of the ocean every night. Instead, you might wake up one night to the sound of someone trying to break into your van, perhaps stealing your bike. It's important not to expect that traveling will fix all your personal issues. Your problems follow you wherever you go. If your problems are centered around that you can't afford rent, then yeah, van life might solve them for you. But any internal problems you have are coming along for the trip. Van life is not an escape from or a solution to your problems. I feel like it's not, <laughs> it doesn't solve a lot of the emotional purpose driven questions mm. that people think it might solve. Like people really sometimes I feel like they feel these voids and they think like, hey, maybe this is gonna be solved by travel. You're just not gonna be fulfilled by like 
going to do van life or traveling to the next country or whatever. And new problems can and will develop on the road. Things that you could never expect to happen will happen and will make life harder. For me, two things I couldn't have prepared for were developing driving anxiety and hives. Prior to van life, I had absolutely loved driving, but about a month into it, I became so scared that I was going to cause an accident or that the van would break down to the point where it became a huge effort to drive anywhere at all. This happened after I lost power steering in Yellowstone and could barely turn my steering wheel on a windy road, and then a couple weeks later drove over a bridge that wasn't meant for vehicles, and got really freaked out by both situations. Being alone a thousand miles away from home, at 18 years old, driving through cities like Seattle and Portland when I'm from a city with a population of less than 20,000 didn't exactly help, and after that I developed what was likely stress-induced chronic highs that lasted for seven itchy months. Having driving anxiety when living out of a vehicle definitely doesn't help stress levels. Something I've never seen anyone talk about that I don't think anyone thinks about before starting van life is that your whole life can start to feel like it's about living in a van. And this is especially true for those who make money on YouTube from posting van life content. You drive, sleep, cook, and work in your van. Your income source is filming and talking about your van. Most conversations you have with family or friends back home or random people you meet along your journey are going to revolve around your life in a van. For some, this might not be a problem, but I know for me personally, I felt like there was nothing about my life that wasn't in some way intertwined with van life, and it got kind of old. Most people do and love van life for what it allows you to do, not because hanging out in a vehicle is just so much fun. So be prepared for your life to be more about van life than you may want. Now, I don't want to sound like I think that no one enjoys van life and everyone on social media just pretends to because that's not my opinion at all, but since I have had the experience of living in a van and having my only source of income be from making YouTube videos about living in a van, I think it's very likely that many van life creators out there worry about what would happen to their income if they were to end van life and therefore have to change up the type of content they're making. You know, you have these moments where you're just like, what would come next? You feel kind of trapped by it. And I think YouTube plays into that too, right? It's yeah. like, you know, obviously our content's kind of based around my life. When you've built an audience around a certain type of content, especially when that topic is very trendy, and then you switch to making videos about other things, your views will go down. There's no question about that. And even if the new content is very similar, like filming the process of building a tiny home, the views are going to drop and you're going to make less money. And that can be a scary thing to think about after you spent months or years putting so much time into building your channel around van life and travel. Even those who don't care about the money as much might feel like they're letting their viewers down because they're not providing them with the content they subscribed for. I haven't traveled in the last year. I felt like my audience was here for travel videos and there was like an insecurity there that my lifestyle, what I'm doing now, isn't monetizable enough because I guess that's the industry of Instagram and YouTube is that you look like you have this lifestyle that is really cool and trendy and like, don't you want to do it? And that's why people tune in and, and watch and click on your videos. But a problem can arise when creators stop living for themselves and start living for their viewers. Feeling like they always need to update their followers on what they're doing or where they are, planning out what they're gonna do around what's gonna look best on Instagram or what will make a good thumbnail and title on YouTube. You may also notice a cheeky costume change. That's A, because I was really cold, and B, if there's a second photo location of the day, you gotta try to make your Instagram look like, you know, you've been in Paris for a while. Instead of truly being able to enjoy their travels, their first instinct whenever something interesting happens is to whip out the camera and start filming. It's more important to get some unique animal encounter on camera than for them to experience it in the moment. It's more interesting to travel from Alaska to the tip of South America than from Delaware to Iowa. So I'm willing to bet there have been a few people who plan their trips around what's going to make for the best title on a video instead of where they actually might want to go. But when your job is YouTube, that's just what you have to do. This is something that a lot of creators can relate to, not just those who post van life or travel videos. People can start out making videos for fun, and then once it becomes their full-time job, they can begin to feel a lot of pressure to make videos when they don't want to or act upbeat and happy in front of the camera when they're really not feeling that way. This doesn't make them bad or misleading, but the amount of pressure one can feel when they have hundreds of thousands of people watching them can certainly lead to them feeling like they have to show up and be the person people subscribe to every time they come on camera. 
YouTube, just like van life, is something that many people dream about that still has its difficulties. Is it the hardest job in the world? No. Should people feel pity for those who are making six figures from talking to a camera about their morning routines? No. But that doesn't mean there are no hardships that come along with it, and it's important to be aware of how those hardships can affect what people show about their lives. It's not difficult for people to start seeing patterns of which videos are doing best and lose themselves in the game of getting more views and making more money. People want to be entertained when watching videos. No one wants to see someone sweeping their floor in real time with no music playing. No one wants to watch a creator sitting on the ground scrolling Instagram for 15 minutes or scouring three different apps trying to figure out where they're going to park that night. People want to see the beautiful nature shots, cool human interactions, maybe a little bit of drama. So that's what people are going to provide. When you watch a vlog of any sort, you're seeing the highlights. When you go out and actually live the lifestyle yourself, you'll see that the highlights are quite a small portion of your life. But that doesn't mean it's not worth it. Van life is an amazing experience, and I'm beyond grateful I got to do it. I was able to grow so much, or I should say I was forced to grow so much, in such a short amount of time, and especially at the age I did, it was definitely an experience that I think has and will continue to only positively influence my early adult years. Traveling can be a very transformative experience for anyone, especially younger people who haven't really experienced much of the world yet. It can teach you independence, strength, and responsibility. You'll see how difficult but rewarding it is to go out of your comfort zone. The affordability of van life allows so many people to travel who would have never been able to go to all the same places if they had to stay in hotels. The places you go, the things you do, the freedom you have, and the people you meet are what everyone looks forward to when they think about van life. But it's important to know that those things do come at a cost. Ignoring or not knowing about the cons can lead to a rude awakening when you hit the road. But if after weighing all the pros and cons, you still hear van life calling your name, then go out and find yourself a van or a car or a bus and be open to whatever experiences it brings you. If you do that, I promise you won't be disappointed.